Hello, my name is Van Wagner. In this film, we're going to be exploring some of the ecological heritage of central Pennsylvania, specifically the changes that have taken place in the fields and forests and rivers of Pennsylvania over about the last 500 years. We're going to explore the wildlife and ecosystems that were in place approximately 500 years ago, and we're going to be looking at the changes that took place. Some species went out of Pennsylvania. Some species are extinct totally. Some species came into Pennsylvania from other continents. So we're going to be looking at some of those species, what caused them to decline, and in the uh, latter part, we're going to be looking at some of these new species, what's causing them to actually accelerate. confluence of the Susquehanna rivers where the west branch meets the north branch. It's a great reminder of the fact that even though this film is going to focus on Europeans influence, we need to remember that there were thousands of years of history before Europeans when humans lived here in Pennsylvania. And here at the confluence of the Susquehanna rivers was quite possibly the biggest Native American village in Pennsylvania, certainly in central Pennsylvania. At the time it was called Shamokin. Later its name was changed to Sunbury, but Shamokin was one of the largest Indian settlements here on the Susquehanna River. And that had a huge impact on the wildlife, especially as Europeans began to come into the area and trade with the Native Americans. It put an enormous pressure on the wildlife. Hunting pressure increased, trapping pressure increased, and therefore you began to see the decline of certain species in the forest. Some key terminology in this film. Extinct is a species that no longer exists anywhere on Earth. Extirpated means extinct in a portion of its range. Native means a species that is living in an area where it originally occurred. Non-native is a species that is usually introduced to an ecosystem, usually by humans, and now occurs where it doesn't belong. The culture of subsistence farming, hunting, and fishing for Native Americans began to change. As Europeans brought with them their agricultural practices, they also brought with them greater means for hunting, most importantly the rifle. And as Native Americans began to abandon their stone tools and stone hunting implements and switching over to the Europeans rifle, it began making both Native Americans and Europeans more effective hunters. As the iron industry grew in Pennsylvania, more and more blacksmiths began appearing in local frontier towns. So as hunters began converting to rifles in the forest, blacksmiths followed them, repairing their rifles for them, making more rifles, and thus spreading the hunter's ability to take a terrible toll on wildlife numbers. Some market hunters would later boast killing thousands of animals in a season with their rifles. Much of this was for meat, but make no mistake about it, the greatest demand was for the fur pelts that they could trade back with their European countries. The flintlock rifle was the frontiersman's hunting tool of choice. 
It relied on a steady supply of black powder as well as lead for the shot. European frontiersmen often traded their rifles with Native Americans. They could trade for furs, trade for food, agricultural goods, whatever it might be. But more and more of these rifles worked their way into the frontier. Too often we think of American history as starting with the pilgrims. But we forget, first of all, Native Americans were here for thousands of years. And second of all, there were European entities throughout central Pennsylvania long before the English and the British. So among the first were the French and also the Dutch. In fact, some historians contend that the Dutch were the first. Uh, Dutch traders were certainly trading with the Delaware Indians early in the 1600s. Uh, Etienne Brule was a Frenchman who was credited with being the first person to navigate the entire Susquehanna River. Whether or not that is actually true, we'll probably never know. But he lays claim to the first European to travel the Susquehanna River. So beginning in the 1600s, you start seeing the pressures of European countries expressing their interest in this newfound land. Trading for furs, looking for gold and silver, which turned out wasn't here on the East Coast in the numbers they had hoped in Europe. And as they began to trade with the, Europe, with the Native Americans, a new pressure was put on the wildlife more trapping, heavier amounts of trapping, and starting in the early 1600s and continuing for the next several hundred years, wildlife suffered a great cost at the hand of humans. In the mid-1600s and into the 1700s, a new hunter appeared in the forest of Pennsylvania. Armed with the flintlock rifle, European hunters began decimating the elk population, the moose population, the wildcat, even the white-tailed deer. This continued until eventually, by the late 1800s, the elk was considered extirpated from Pennsylvania, the moose was considered extirpated, the mountain lion, the black bear, and even the white-tailed deer. In addition to their rifles, they brought with them the iron traps that made the frontiersmen such lethal trappers. Soon the beaver, the pine marten, the fisher, and the otter would also be extirpated from Pennsylvania. Furs of all kinds from all different species started leaving Pennsylvania at an alarming rate and in most cases headed back to Europe on sailing vessels. Once in Europe, it was converted into some of the finest fashion of the day. Men's hat, women's boots, and some just for decoration to hang on walls. The leather from these hides was used in many cases to equip European armies.